All right, joining me right now, back on the show, probably the most popular guest, and you know, it ain't a bad thing, Martin Nguyen, what's going on, man? What's happening, bro? It's always good to be back. The reason I didn't introduce you, because everybody knows who you are, man, you're the featherweight, lightweight king, you're going to be fighting on July 27th in Manila, again, one championship reign of kings, Kevin Bellingham for the interim bantamweight title, man, how did this fight come along? Look, um, everyone, everyone knew that I wanted that um, that rematch with Bibiano, man. That that split decision, I couldn't go to sleep at night. So, um, man, I, look, Bibiano, um, it it is what it is. He he got the victory, and Bellingon is like you know the number one contender. So for me to be able to um, avenge that loss, I'd have to go through the true number one contender, which is Bellingon, and um, straight after my fight with. Uh, with Christian Lee, Chatri told me that um, Fernandez was um, was injured, so I was like, "Oh shit, I'm not gonna wait around for him. I'll just I'll just, I'll just call out the number one contender, man, and let's get it on." And um, true number one contender, man, is um, so Bellingon, and he deserves it. And he was promised a shot, and I'm sure he, I'm sure he he didn't have to take this fight, but you know, as true warriors, he. Um, he took the fight on, bro. So I, 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 I planted the seed for the media, and the media blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a skill that you have to have nowadays is to play the game. And you're playing the game really mm. well because you're getting what you want. Let's go back to, like you said, after the fight, you talked, uh, you talked to Tatri about you know, getting, this, getting this fight done. Uh, there was a lot of rumors, man, after the fight that you were going to fight uh, Bibiano right away, but they weren't true. Uh, sources say that Bibiano was injured. And then, right after you got this fight booked, or this fight was announced, there was a picture that came out of him training. So, there's a lot of <laughs> rumors swirling around with all that stuff. What Do you think Bibiano's kind of ducking you a little bit? He needs a little bit of time, or what? Uh, it is. It is what it is, man. I, I'm sure he was injured. Uh, I'm sure as fighters, we don't we don't like to bring up excuses or anything like that. So, um, as I said, man, if he's really injured, um, I hope he recovers well. Because um, you know, the, 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 there's a time that we're gonna cross paths again. So um, it's gonna happen sooner or later. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just thinking about the next step in my life, and this is um, Bellingham, man. So, all right, man. You're the champion of two divisions. You're probably the busiest fighter on the roster. How do you maintain this output? Look, um, I said to myself at the start of the year, I set my goals and uh, I said that I wanted to win the bantamweight title, um, defend both lightweight and um, featherweight titles. Obviously, the first fight didn't go my way. I defended the featherweight. Um, look, an opportunity has arise to fight for a third title again, so I'm going to take this. The next step after that featherweight was for me was to defend the lightweight, and I was all for defending the lightweight as well. So, um, look, the the opportunity came up with the the Bellingon fight, and you know what? I, I grabbed it with two hands. The lightweight title, I, I will defend it this year. Um, just see what happens after this. All right, let's go back to your featherweight title defense. Successful uh, in the fight, the first round. Christian Lee had you in a submission. A lot of people were surprised, you know, like, what's happening? Were you in any danger? Look, to be honest with you, um, no. I wasn't in not one bit of danger. Um, man, I, I I just stayed from my true roots, man, and just stayed calm. Um, nine times out of ten, a fighter in that position with that much pressure on you, they'll buckle and they'll crumble. And Christian, uh, kudos to him, he got, he got his slam. Um... And he, and he locked on the, the submission, man. He was, he was thinking, finish, 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 and which is, which is what every fighter should finish. But um, look, as soon as that, as soon as he was transitioning, I was like, I had gaps. I had like, there was, there was a lot of movement in his submissions where I could get free. It was just a matter of time. And you know what? I just stayed patient, um, stayed calm. I wasn't choking. Um, there was no crank or anything in it. I, I can see that he was trying to pull me down, but it just wasn't working his way. I just stayed calm and stayed up against the fence. And sure enough, man, he, he slipped off and the fight continued. The leg kicks played a huge factor in that fight. Did you see that as a weakness in your preparations leading up to the fight? Um, look, I... I I, I just I, I played I played with the time you know so every leg kick I landed 
I was very um, careful as well because of that counter cross. Um, also, to see if he'd like cut me off and go to take me down. So I was very careful throwing um, kicks. Uh, in general, I just wanted to put more pressure. The ultimate goal was to take him down and pressure him because every fighter turns into a BJJ fighter in an MMA match, and they think it's a BJJ match where you know it, it's a different it's a different ball game when you're getting punches to the face. You know, it's it's never a BJJ game. So um, look, I wanted to take him down earlier, but it's just I was I was very hesitant of closing the distance because of how fast he was and how long and strong he was. So. Um, you know what? I was like, you know, I've got, I got more to risk of closing the distance and everything. You know, he can catch me with one punch. I can lose everything that I've worked for. So if he wants to be the champion, he has to take me out. And I was waiting for that opportunity, which never came. But um, anyways, it is what it is. Well, after the first round, it seemed like to most people that you won the rest of the fight every round after that. And I know one championship doesn't judge on rounds. But a lot of people were pretty angry about the result of the fight, that it was a split decision win. Were you kind of pissed off a little bit? Uh, look, um, when it became a split decision readout, um, when Dominic Lau was reading it out, I was like, in my head, I'm like, dude, I'm going to get robbed again. I'm going to get robbed so hard. I'm, uh, I was like, in my head, I was thinking, man, if I get robbed this freaking time around, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to crack it right now. But um, you know what? I I looked over to my coaches and they'll go. Don't worry about it. It's a wrong decision. But um, you you have it in the bag. You have it in the bag. So I just nodded my head. I looked back. I waited for the decision to be read out. And I was like, you know what, man? These split decisions. They they're getting on me, man. They're getting on my nerves. And I can't I can't risk it anymore. And I can't do do this anymore. I need to go back to my roots, you know. And um, sure enough, man. You you would say July twenty seventh, man. There's no split decisions here. I think th those precious seconds at the end of the fight where they're about to read the split decision announcement is chopping off years off people's lives nowadays, huh? Definitely, man, definitely. <laughs> and I'm like, look, man, I can't, I can't go through that heartache of that split decision, you know, split decision, split decision. I was like, never again. That's it. It's either all or nothing. Your history with Christian Lee after de defeating him twice, have you shut the door on that rivalry? It's over? I feel like I've shut the door, but because one championship have read out their split decisions, it's going to be, his door's going to be always open. So um, he's going to always want to do it again because it was a split decision. Um, I beat him only by a split decision. So it's not, it's, it's never going to be closed for him, you know, just as the same door as me and um, Bibiana, you know. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I, I feel like I've closed the door and I don't see him getting another title shot unless he takes out, you know, another five five top contenders, man. Like, he, it's it's back to square one for him, and I'd hope so for everyone else when they lose, a, like, you know, a title shot. You get back to square one, you work your way back up the rankings, you know, you can't just call for a rematch if you, like, you're dominantly beaten, you know. Uh, if it was, like, a split decision, split decision, like me and Viviano, then, you know, you can... I'm an R, but... um. You know, uh, it is what it is, man. <laughs> I, I feel like that door's closed. Well, now you get to move on. You're going to fight for the interim title in Manila versus Kevin Belagong. He comes from one of the most dominant teams in Asia, Team Lakai. He will be your third opponent from that camp. You have finished the first two. Do you have the secret formula to beating these guys? Because a lot of these guys are not losing. Man, they look Coach Mark over there. He's he's doing a good job, man. Um, the the fighters, man, they're humble, they're hungry, and they're forever evolving, you know. So, um, this 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 so called um weakness that they have in their ground game, man, I haven't seen it in the last five fights for any of them, you know. So, look at they they're complete martial artists in 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 terms of my eyes. So it's up to me as a champion to you know acknowledge the 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 fight itself and um take it as it comes pick on whatever i see that's weak and you know implement my game plan so we'll go from there if you compare the skill sets of bibiano fernandez and your next opponent kevin what key differences do you see in their styles um the main key difference i see in their styles is um that Kevin is much, much faster. And I'd say same 
I'd say that they say that probably have the same strength. Um, Kevin is just much more explosive. Um, and when it comes to the speed between Kevin and Bibiana, that's the major difference. Um, fair enough, no one can probably match um, Belligan's speed, but you know what? When you ex- when you keep exploding, man, and you throw all these speedy shots and they're not landing, um, sure enough, you're going to lose that gas tank of his, you know, and he's shown in his last few fights, if he hits the, you know, the late second rounds to third rounds, um, you can see a completely different fighter. So um, we'll see how he goes. Hopefully he's rectified that, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, this is your fourth straight five-round fight you've been preparing for. Has it gotten a lot easier each time? Look, um, my whole career, I've always... Um, my whole career, I've always prepared for a five-round fight. So regardless, um, I'm always going to be ready. Um, and we'll, we'll see what happens, man. Like a, even from my first fight in one championship to my, my last fight in one championship, man, it's always been preparing for five rounds. And, you know, the cardio is never, never a problem for me. So, This is also your second time dropping down the bantamweight. You know, we talked about this before. Has the process of lowering your weight become easier this time around? Uh, this time around, it's um, it's much much easier. Look, I, I um, the first thing I did when I got the the notice from Chatria was I messaged my um my nutritionist. I'm like, look, we have seven and a half weeks. I have six kilos to cut. Is that a problem? And she goes, she knows my body more much better than I do myself. And she goes, look, we can do it. I'm like, are you sure? She goes, yes, we can do it. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And sure enough, man, look, man, I'm already on weight and I'm a week out. Still eating. Still eating, man. Like all the meals that she's feeding me, man, I'm, I'm having three four, three, four meals a day, including protein shakes. And you know what? I've got energy to get, keep going. So it's pretty good. Uh, do you feel pound for pound that Kevin has the most power in his strikes by looking at his track record compared to your previous opponents? Oh, yeah, man. Like, def- definitely. Definitely. Um, Look, Kevin, a lot of people underestimate him, man, but um, just just looking at his record, looking at the guys that he's fought, man, he's knocked out some pretty decent guys. And, you know, the, the, all this um, wrestling, I'm going to wrestle with him, I'm going to take him down, and all, all this hoo-ha. Um, no one has been able to Im- like, amplify their game on him because he's forever evolving. And, you know, what? One, once you get hit by Kevin, man, everyone changes their game. So, um it's just a matter of time. Um, I'm just going to see how we go and go from there, man. All right. Well, it seems like you're prepared. Your weight is on point. Now let's move on to some other topics. I want to ask you about, you know, you are blazing your own trail, your own history in one championship, just in MMA in general. Are you surprised that some of the fighters in the lightweight and featherweight divisions are not calling you out more? Oh, dude, I'm seeing it the opposite way around. I, I think at every event I'm getting called out, you know. Um, it's always, for me, man, if you're going to call me out, I'm just going to look at you. I'm going to laugh. Um, you have to work your way up the rankings, man. Like, there's there's a process to this, man. I, I don't think one championship is about that money fight or, you know, that fan fight. They, they, they put whoever truly deserves it. And I'll give you an example, man, like Lee Kai Wen. Lee Kai Wen's calling me out left, right, and center every single fight that he has. Man, that last fight against uh, Emelo, man, he was up, up until the, the final bell, man, when he when he knocked Emelo out. Um, I, I saw it as him getting picked apart, man. Emelo, I mean, he could have done much better. I think he just got too much in the hype of um, just standing and trading with um, Lee Kai Wen where he could have just you know, implemented his wrestling game when Lee Kai Wen was, was tied and, you know, I'm um, hurt. So, um, in terms of, um, is he ready? Is he ready for a championship fight? Um, I don't think so, man. Like, um, I'd like to see him win at least two, two to three more top, top contender guys. Let's, 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 let's be honest, man. The people he's versus, who are they? You know, um, Emelo is a good name. He, he's a guy that's up there. I'd like to see him versus either a Christian or a Marat or even Jadamba. Um, but you know, Jadamba is a dark horse, man. So, um, Give it time. I think I think me and him will be crossing paths soon. Well, speaking of uh, a lot of movement going on in the weight divisions, and you are currently the champion of two of them, 
In your eyes, who are the number one contenders of the lightweight and featherweight division? <laughs> Look, um, from what I see, man, straight up first person would be Ev Ting. Um, Ev Ting's he's what, on a four fight winning streak now since he's lost to Edward. Um, other than Ev, I see uh, man, the 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 old king um, Shinya. Um, and you know, if 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 Shinya loses to Shannon, then I say I see myself fighting Shannon. So. Um, there's a lot of contenders, as I, as I said, um, but the main um, the main guy that's actually worked his way up and actually I think has deserved it is Ev. Um, but we'll just wait and see what uh, one championship won. And, you know, whoever they offer in that lightweight division, man, I'm going to sign it. So uh, there's no ducking. How about in the featherweight? Who do you think is the top guy? Top guy, I'd, I'd say at the moment... Um, I see two guys. I see Jadamba and I see um, Tatsuya Yamada. Um, those those two guys. At the moment, that's on good streaks, um, good comeback fights. Um, they've been tough fights, um, and they're, they're, they're working their way up the rankings where they're getting noticed. So, um, hey, Jadamba is a, a hero of mine, man. Like, uh, one, I would love to. I would love to face him, um, regardless of whether he's on a losing streak or whatever. Man, like a Jadamba fight must happen sometime in my career. Um, but yeah, the other guy that I see is uh, Tetsuya Yamada. He, Yamada, sorry, he dropped down from lightweight after losing um, to that Turkish guy or whatever his name was. Um, but yeah, man, um, look, he's, he's been on a two fight uh, winning streak. He. Man, they're, they're, they're high caliber guys that he's fought, so um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, July 27th, main event Manila, one championship reign of kings. Martin Nguyen will face Kevin Bellagon for the interim bantamweight title. You can watch it on the One Super app for free. Thanks, Martin, for your time, man. It's always a pleasure. Anytime, bro. Anytime, brother. Thank you.